Hi, this is Peter Taiti, Carmelo Panetta, and Manos Prilakis from the Minneapolis Art Institute, presenting case 110 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which uh, CT and geography was used to guide an intervention of an osteal circumflex chronic total occlusion. The patient was an elderly man who had previous coronary bypass with a lima to LAD and a vein graft to the first diagonal that was occluded. He had multiple previous PCIs, and most recently he presented with recurrent angina and was found to have a circumflex CTO that failed an attempt for recanalization. He had hypertension, dyslipidemia, and type 2 diabetes. In this course, he's in geography. He did have an osteal occlusion of the, proc of the circumflex. The right coronary artery was patent with previously placed stents and it did provide some uh, epicardial collaterals into the circumflex. However, those collaterals were small tortures and uh, were linking to the circumflex near to the proximal and the distal cap. There was an occlusion of the saphenous vein graft to the diagonal branch and the lima, as expected, was in um, good shape and was supplying the mid left anterior descending artery. The patient did have an attempt for PCI of the circumflex CTO which uh, unfortunately was unsuccessful two months prior. He therefore presented for another attempt for canalizing the circumflex. He did have an ambiguous proximal cap as can be seen here with multiple small branches originating close to the left main. The length was short he did have uh, a bifurcation of the distal cap with a large uh, first obtuse marginal branch originating close uh, to the distal cap. And the collaterals were epicardial and not uh, very good for recanalization. Therefore, the plan here was to do undergrade wire escalation as a second line attempt undergrade dissection reentry with the caveat that it might compromise patency of the obtuse marginal branch, and leaving retrograde as a last resort because the collaterals were not of the best quality. There were four, therefore, attempts were made to recanalize using a Supercross 120 microcatheter that has a distal bend, and various guide wires such as the Gaia 2nd and 3rd, the Hornet, as well as the Pilot 200, without success. And this is how one can approach the ambiguous proximal cap. One is to do better in geography to understand where the vessel is heading to. The second is to do CT and geography. And in this particular case, given the previous failure, we had done a CT angiogram, which we were able to co-register and guide our procedure, as I will show you in the next few slides. The other option is to use intravascular ultrasound, which was not useful in this case. And also the move the cap techniques would not be useful in this case because uh, of the origin of the LAD and the lack of a well-defined proximal cap. Retrograde was an option, but as a last resort, because of the small size and tortuosity. We therefore registered the angiogram and the CTA, and this can be very useful, allowing us to determine the vessel course. In this particular case, we see that the circumflex is heading down and the ramus is a large bifurcating branch. But we could not understand exactly what's going on. But once we changed the projection and we went more caudal, now we can see a little better what the problem was. And in this particular view, we have the least foreshortening. The green means that there is minimal foreshortening, whereas the red means that there is significant foreshortening. In this view, it becomes apparent that the problem we had with crossing is that the guide wires entered this small branch that is before the occluded segment, and that's why we couldn't cross into the distal circumflex. So after using the CT co-registration, we were able to advance a Hornet 14 guide wire through the supercross, and that seemed to enter into the distal trilumen, which was also confirmed by doing the co-registration and showing that it's following the course of the vessel. And also after um, a small balloon dilation, we did see that there was some flow recanalized, restored into the distal circumflex. The next step here would be to preserve the obtuse marginal branch. And one way to do this while maintaining access to the circumflex is to use a dual lumen microcatheter. We did try a twin pass torque, but we did have difficulty entering into the obtuse marginal branch. And unfortunately, for various reasons, the wire position was actually lost, so we had to restart the procedure from scratch 
and rewire and eventually after a lot of attempts we were able to advance the guide wire into the distal vessel. At this point, because of issues concerns for contrast and radiation, we decided to not attempt going into the obtuse marginal branch, but uh, instead start into the circumflex. Retrospectively, we should have probably tried to cross into the obtuse marginal a little bit longer than we did. The circumflex stand was underexpanded, as can be seen by intravascular ultrasound, so we did a high-pressure balloon inflation with a non-compliant balloon. And after doing that, we did restore flow into the distal circumflex while uh, maintaining good flow into the LAD, which of course was occluded further down. And that uh, highlights the importance of um, having guidance in case of ambiguous proximal cap. In this particular case, CT and geography, co-registration did help us cross into the CTO. Also, the use of an angulated microcatheter was very important pointing us towards the proximal cap. In this case, it was the Supercross 120. The Venture can be used as well for the same purpose and can provide good support, but unfortunately, it was on recall and not available at the time of this procedure. And finally, use of a dual lumen microcatheter is a good solution for wiring side branches without losing access of the wire that has crossed into the distal true lumen. Thank you.